everyone, this is Ian Harris from Australia here and today I want to show you how to paint a zebra for beginners, intermediate and advanced painters, okay? It's a pretty easy process when I show you how we do this, alright? So there she is there. Alright. So we'll get this onto the easel there like that. Now, I'm going to only use the three colours today. I'll just show you on the, the board down here, okay? Let's have a look at those colours right now. I used black, and I've got three different tones of grey. I've got a dark, a medium, and a light colour. You can mix them up yourself, or if you can find them in your art shop. I used titanium white, yellow oxide, and Van Dyke brown. And I used two types of filbert brushes, a small one and a large one. Now, as you saw in the beginning, we have yourself a zebra. I've printed it out to the A3 size, 42 inches by 30 inches, okay? Taping it on so she can go backwards and forwards. Now, what I've done, I've outlined it. I've outlined the outline and I've put the, the shape of his stripes in there, following the contours of his neck and his face, just so it's not going to be a flat picture. So I can start toning this in. All right, it's that easy. So let's get started. Now, probably advanced to intermediate um, artists can try this one. It might be a bit difficult for beginners, but beginners can still do it. You just do not have to do as much toning and contouring of the shapes. You can just leave it a flat image, okay? All right, I'm starting off with my darker tones. So we've just got the three tones there, dark, medium, and light. So I'm going to virtually follow my contours, and I want that to start following the shape. Now, to make it easy, use your same brush. I'll get that on there. Use your same brush, all right, just to, to blend that out. But you want to be following the shape of everything. Okay, so that's up that way. And this is coming that way. Just so they're not so stark. Wipe your paint off the brush because we need this ridge coming down here, this darker tone here. So what I plan to do is put my darker values in there and then we'll go to the medium and then the light ones and then highlight it with white. All right, we'll get a bit of toning around his, as horses and zebras have that distinctive muscle cheek, like they've got a big ball of bubble gum in their mouth. So, we're getting this on. Now don't worry too much going on the outside of the lines here, all right? Don't worry at all. If you go outside the lines, just stop, breathe, relax. Getting our darker tones in, you might have to change them to even darker in some areas. We'll see how we go. See, because this is going to create the, the dips and all the muscle shapes in his face, what I'm doing here now, okay? We'll get a bit of something going on where his neck turns into his mane so there's virtually a curve here and we want to portray that so we're coming up out and this will sort of come around if you don't have these colors mix them just make a dark gray and to make it very easy mix yourself a medium and a light gray all right, there's pretty much me dark values. Now I want to start putting the medium ones in there. So there's me neck there. I want to start bringing this in. Don't confuse yourself by using too many brushes. I'm going to get that on its angle there. Wiping that same brush. And then on that angle, start merging those two colors together. All right? keeping the, the stroke on those shapes that you want. See, I've put those lines there so I know this has got to go on that angle. Get it in there. Do a bit at a time. Wipe your brush and then 
blend that into the darker. Okay, wipe your brush really dry so this can blend into there. Get him on there. Wipe him. Your black lines are going to hide a lot of stuff. Don't be too particular, but be particular where you need to be. Merge the two, the medium to the to the dark. Oh yeah. Tell yourself you can do it and you can. See, it's just playing with it. Okay, so as you can see, what we're virtually doing is getting all our tone values and shading in before we put the lines on. It's not just a, a flat background color. Merge all this. See, I'll put that on, see how easy that was? Drop that brush. Grabbing this one and merging it into the the darker one there. Using a drier brush. Darker colours here. Putting it on, grabbing my blending brush and merging those colours together. Once you start carrying through your painting, you'll get used to your procedure of this and then you'll do it with your eyes shut. Blend. See how this is, that's what you don't want. You want that to merge nicely. And that's all that's involved in doing that. Anyone can do it. You can do it. I know you can do it. Now we've got to put a bit of dark on his snout. Get all this darkness there. Just somewhere to blend up into his lighter areas. Just like so. Put it on. Don't think about it. Just get into it and tell yourself you can bloody do it, eh? See how easy that was? It looks like a dog's breakfast, but when you blend it, it's not so bad. You can do it. And when we put these black lines on top, it's going to look beautiful. to show us where everything is. Because he's got those black lines coming through his hair, so you want them to be in line with the hair strokes. You don't want them to be going across the hair strokes. You want them running parallel with the hair strokes, all right? And this will be all toned down as well. That dark and light merged hope I'm talking loud enough I have a habit of going soft when I get close to camera now just use whatever brushes you're going to be comfortable with all right now I want to put some color in his ear there's no color in that so we'll just virtually come around there like so. So we've got our medium and dark tones over the lines that we've traced on there, okay? So we're getting an idea of giving this zebra some good detail. Okay, we're gonna do the light bits. I'm finding it easy as I go because I don't do many these type of paintings. I'm using two filberts, one to apply the paint and the other one to blend it, all right? Now I'm looking at my profile picture and this has sort of got some light coming down here like so. So I've just whacked it on like that, all right? See that? Now I'm going to grab my filbert brush, my dry one, and then scoot that up there like that. Look at that. That was so easy, eh? There's no retarder or nothing in here. But do use a good quality paint. If you're using an impasto 
student quality or something, it'll be very watery and transparent and you'll have trouble. In here, just there, and sometimes in a picture, there might not be something there, a certain shadow or something, but for the art's sake, it needs to be there, so don't be shy to add that. Now I'm going to crisscross this in a roundabout fashion, wipe it as I go because it's picking up paint, get all the way across and then start again. See here, we want to blend that. Look at it, just tell yourself, oh, I can do that, Ian, bloody oath, I'm going to pick this painting up today and do it. See, it's done. And then we'll wipe your brush and go to the other side, all right? I'm looking at my reference picture, working out where little subtle bits of highlight need to go. Just be sure when you put it on, just lightly scrape it on there so it's not a big, thick, wet blob to try and merge. Wipe your brush. This is fun. Because in the picture it looks like the sun's hitting this part of his stout snout. Alright, now we're just going to dry this so we can put the carbon paper and the black lines and the details, alright? Alright, this is all dry. We're going to put our carving paper on top of our dried painting so far. I'm using a sheet of paper because it's easy to handle. We're going to use a red pen and we're going to go around the whole outside of the image. And we're going to put in all these black lines, alright? Now anything you've missed out on, don't go and put all the carbon paper back and um, get a pencil, just a lead pencil and join up or fill in any missing bits that you might have left out, okay? Now because there's a lot of lines on the snout, get your lead pencil and mark them out, colour them in a bit just so you know where they are because you don't want to get confused and colour in the area that's supposed to be not coloured in, alright? I want to highlight the particular areas and it doesn't matter if I go over those lines a bit but I don't want to go too far into it and then finishing it off with the black zebra stripes. I'm getting my lightest tone out of the three greys and we're going to highlight where the highlight's supposed to be which is about here in between where I'm going to have all my black lines. Just along there. I'm coming in between all those. I'm pretending that I'm doing it. See? My brush is off where the black line is and coming again, keeping my brush strokes in the contouring shapes of that big bubblegum cheek. Bit there. Putting some here. See, because I've penciled there, I can see in between where I've got to go. Instead of putting it on the... You don't want to accidentally put it on the bit that's going to be black. Now, don't do the mistake of drawing an actual line there. The lines and the colour is going to create the edge of his body once we've blacked in all these lines, okay? on his neck and see once we put all the blacks in there like I said earlier it'll bring this to life and we've used the um, traceable printout to get everything in the right angles for the brush strokes <laughs> but that's fine that's the way I want it to look it's up to you how detailed you make yours okay but this is just 
snotting it all together before we black him out because blacking him out is that that's 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 what's going to make all this little zebra come home so we're where are we gotta work out what's white and what's going to be black get some up here okay this is the fun bit We've virtually toned it, highlighted it. We've got all our lines everywhere where we need them to go. Now, that is pretty much it. Okay. Bringing the blacks on top of that will bring it to life. Trust me, I've done it before and I'm going to do it again. This will make up for some of the crappy paintings I do because I can get a bit lazy and pull out a crappy one every now and then. But this one's going to look really really bullshittingly good all right now it's important to keep the black i'm going to do it in black to have it wet enough to flow but not too wet where you see all brush marks and it's opaque and you can see through it find that perfect consistency so when you're putting it on it's going really nice the way you want it to be okay all right now we're going to start putting these blacks on okay And then I'll do a lot, most of this off camera, but I'm just giving you an idea. See, that's not, see how that was a bit dry? So I'm going to find it a bit wetter, put a bit more water in it, just so we can get that to flow off the brush more wetter. And see, these, these ends of these lines and the background is going to create the outside line for this zebra all right and work it out see that's the right blender that i need it's not too dry but not too wet and do your best to get them very sharp edges not feathered light edges because it just ruins the quality of your painting then Okay. Not a realistic picture, but it's good enough to say, man, that's not a bad painting to your friends, you know. They'll, they'll tell you that. They'll tell you, you are doing all right. The eye is what's going to really bring this painting to life. The better you can do your eye, the more, the more charisma this picture will have. With the end piece of his snout there, grab your paint then just wipe it off and then where you've done here you've got it solid and then just scratch it into this gray tone you got here because you don't want that a solid color on the reference picture that's sort of faded and everything okay so you want to get that aspect of it going like that and where it's really dark is inside his nostril we can do that dark and around there and also, I think he's got a bit of another nostril happening over this side somewhere. Something over there, anyway. And then wipe your brush. And you're just sort of merging this. So it's gone from a solid colour here and going into this sort of colour here. eye and nice and sharp all right I've got this area ready to block out because this is just going to be in a a black background to give it in my eyes more pop What I didn't do in this painting, but I, I would have liked to have done, 
was grab my liquid white and paint the whole canvas white so what I'm brushing on here would have flowed across the canvas a lot easier than being chalky and dry but I managed to get it but it would have been better that's all getting the shape of his ear this black background is determining the shape of everything now and we can just block it in I want to get some Van Dyke brown and just determine where the ends of his hair is now because all that blacks come in like that it's sort of shortened his mane so to keep his mane in perspective with the actual zebra I'm just getting some Van Dyke brown on my flat brush and I want to determine where the ends of his hair are I better dry that first I'm just getting the Van Dyke brown looking at my reference picture and getting some of the ends of his hairs just in the brown there to make up where the actual end of his mane is okay it's probably not that easy to see on the camera but I'm going over the into the black more than I need to I can then come I want to keep these strokes within the direction of the main hair. Alright, for his eye, I'm going to use the Van Dyke Brown as the darker tone. So I'll just get all his eyeball in with the Van Dyke Brown. Nice and tight. The neater you can make this, the better it'll make your painting look as well. Now I want to get some yellow oxide, I've just wiped my brush and I want to work out the dimension or the tone of his eyeball so I'm going to sort of come this way just to give this Now I'm going to wipe the brush and I want to blend that into that Van Dyke brown just like so Okay, I want it a bit more distinctive than that, so I'll, I'll dab it on, dancing it on, dancing it on, stopping about there, wipe me brush so it's dry, and then merge that into the Van Dyke brown again. I'll give him an eyeball, a dark eyeball I don't know how big to make it let's say that big and I want to put some something like that in there and then maybe just the slightest around here I have myself a black paint pen I've got a script liner there somewhere now which way will we have his eyelashes sort of want something detail-y I don't know, something like that
I had a white one and I just put a few little whiskers here as well. All right, we'll just get a frame on that and get a close up and see how she looks, okay? Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Just a simple zebra to do in acrylics. We're using some carbon paper, okay? Now be sure to click the link in the description below to see the bloopers of this video also and subscribe to that channel, okay? All the best to everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya!